How's it going everyone? My name is Mulder and welcome to GameCron, your number one stop for fun tips and tricks on your favorite video games. Today we'll be talking about Destroy All Humans Gameplay Tips and Tricks Part 2. In this video I'll go over Armageddon Mode, one of the toughest yet funnest challenges you'll unlock later in the game. I'll also be talking about some of the new weapons I've unlocked for Crypto, such as his Ion Detonator, along with what upgrades I've gotten on current weapons. And then finally, I'll talk about some of the new upgrades I've gotten for the Flying Saucer, such as the Sonic Boom, along with what upgrades I've added to the ship itself. All that and more straight ahead. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for a lot more. Now without further ado, let's dive into our Destroy All Humans Gameplay Tips and Tricks Part 2. On behalf of all the nations of the Earth, I welcome you to our planet, O oh friend from another world. Gee, thanks. Means a lot. Let's start things off with Armageddon Mode. Now Armageddon Mode is the fourth challenge you unlock once you progress a little further into the game. How this mode works is that there are certain selected targets throughout the map, such as cop cars or armored vehicles, to where you'll have to drain energy out of them. While your ship's doing that, you also need to destroy as much property damage as you can while also ranking up as much cash to where you'll be able to get to the third higher rank before the timer runs out. The higher rank you get, the more fewer on DNA you're going to unlock. Now so far I've done about three Armageddon challenges and I've gotten three star completions on each one. Mostly thanks to the fact that I've upgraded my overall death rate to level two while also unlocking and upgrading the current Sonic Boom attachment I've recently got, which I'll definitely talk about later in this video. You want to definitely make sure that you have as high enough shields as possible for your Flying Saucer, while also making sure your Death Ray and Sonic Boom are upgraded to at least level 2. Because the time limit gets shorter on later Armageddon missions, and there's also more enemies on the field to attack you, it's best to have your shields as high as they possibly can while also unlocking the Sonic Boom to a higher level and upgrading your Death Ray. You're really going to be on the clock on the later missions on Armageddon, but if you focus on upgrading your Death Ray and the Sonic Boom, you're going to get Armageddon missions done really quickly and unlock a bunch of new Fioran DNA to spend. That's the ticket! It seems the boys at HUAC have taught us a thing or two. Now let's talk about Crypto and what new weapons I have unlocked for him, along with what weapons I currently am upgrading. Let's start things off with his brand new weapon, the Ion Detonator, which I currently have at level 1. The Ion Detonator is a perfect crowd clearing weapon and is absolutely perfect for Rampage mode. This weapon, as you can see, can wipe out not only humans, but also do heavy damage to all vehicles and buildings, anything that gets caught in its blast. Because the ammo count is so low, try to upgrade the Ion Detonator as quickly as you can, definitely when you're going on to the later Rampage missions. You're really going to need the Ion Detonator and you will breeze through some of the Rampage modes much faster so as long as you have this weapon fully upgraded, to as high as it can possibly go given to where you are in the story. The next thing I'm currently focusing on is my Disintegration Ray, which is now at level 2. Where I'm currently on the story, I'm now taking on Giant Mechs, which can prove to be a little bit of a challenge, but if your Disintegration Ray is at level 2, you can melt these things down pretty quickly. Thanks to upgrading my Disintegration Ray at level 2, I'm able to melt both incoming soldiers with RPGs and these mechs without a problem. So really go out of your way to make sure this is upgraded by level 2 before you face these mechs. Next up is the Zapomatic. Zapomatic is your first starting weapon, and as I mentioned in my previous video, it is a really worth upgrading this weapon just yet until you're about midway point through the story. The reason why I've upgraded my Zapomatic to level 2 is because some of the abduction missions that I had to do, I actually had to kill humans and abduct their dead bodies. Now because you can't really use the Ion Detonator or the Disintegration Ray because it just zaps their bodies down to oblivion, you're really going to have to use the Zapomatic to kill these enemies while still leaving their bodies intact. Having the Zapomatic up to level 2, it kills my enemies a lot faster while also chain lightning any enemies that are nearby. This can make a life a lot easier for you in later abduction missions or just simply when you're surrounded by too many enemies in later missions. Next up is Brain Extraction, which now I have at level 2. Because Brain Extraction is at level 2, it allows me to rip brains out of my enemies a lot faster and in bigger numbers. When you're surrounded by a multiple of 10 enemies, all you need to do is simply Brain Extract just one of them. It will highlight another two enemies nearby into which their brains will just pop whether you attack them or not. Doing this as a chain reaction to multiple enemies in the area, you can actually pop the brains of around 6 to 5 enemies rapidly without even having to fire a shot. Either take cover while they're trying to shoot you before their brains pop, or simply just shoot at them a little bit to weaken them to where their brains will eventually pop in no time. Brain extraction at level 2 definitely makes it a lot easier to collect Fioran DNA in the later levels. And trust me, you will need that Fioran DNA to upgrade as soon as you can. And finally, the last thing I've upgraded to level 2 is my Psychokinesis. Now, Psychokinesis allows me to carry objects a lot faster and throw them a lot harder while also picking up a little larger objects. I recommend you get Psychokinesis up to level 2 as soon as you can because that way you can lift up bodies and throw them towards your abduction missions a lot faster. By also getting your Psychokinesis to level 2, you'll be able to throw objects a lot harder and faster in the later missions especially the optional missions where you need to throw explosive boxes at enemy soldiers in order to get that mission done. Definitely go out of your way to get as many optional missions as you can during the normal missions. These can sometimes give you between 5 to 1,000 extra fewer on DNA by the time you're done with the mission. Definitely worth it if you want to upgrade your character a lot faster. Please, don't hurt me. I'll do anything you say. I swear. You bet your ass you will. Come on, birdie boy. I got a little job for you. 
And finally, let's talk about the flying saucer and what upgrades I have for that ship so far. The new additions to this ship is currently the Sonic Boom, which I have at level 2. This has easily become one of my favorite weapons to use on the flying saucer. Not only does this weapon absolutely devastate buildings, and it's absolutely perfect for Armageddon. Seriously, really try to upgrade your Sonic Boom to level 2 for the Armageddon modes. You'll be able to breeze through these challenges a lot quickly and get tons of fear and DNA when you're done. But what also makes the Sonic Boom great is that it takes out groups of enemies at once with a single shot and can take down those pesky AA turrets that are oftentimes shooting at your ship when you're just patrolling around. Definitely upgrade the Sonic Boom as soon as you can, but the other thing you want to upgrade to is the Saucer Shields, which I currently have at level 2. In modes like Armageddon, you're going to be taking a lot of enemy fire as you're flying around trying to get the mission complete. Your ship, if you still have the starting shield, you're not going to stay up in the air for very long. Having my Flying Saucer Shields at level 2 not only makes it a lot easier for me to drain the enemy vehicle that I'm currently hovering over while taking enemy fire, but it also allows me to take my time and destroy key objects that I need to destroy in Armageddon mode, or if I just want to go on a rampage in normal exploration, I don't have to worry about my ship taking on too much damage. You're going to notice there's going to be more enemies packed a lot more firepower as you progress throughout the game, and this game is definitely a little bit more challenging than the original classic. So really try to upgrade your ship's defensive capabilities if you want to get those certain challenges done while also exploring without having to take too much damage. I'll definitely be going over more weapons and more ship upgrades as I continue to progress throughout the game, so definitely stick around. But in the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed our Destroy All Humans Gameplay Tips and Tricks Part 2. There'll be a Destroy All Humans Tips video Part 3 coming out very soon, so stick around. As always, I'm Mulder, and thank you so much for tuning in to GameCron to where we follow some of the latest games out there for your tips and tricks needs. We'll be doing tips and tricks series on the next games coming out such as Star Wars Squadrons, Cyberpunk 2077, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and much more. Until then, I'll see you at the next tips and tricks video. Okay, monkeys. You want a war? You got a war.